Hello everybody! I am stuck in quarantine, so I thought it might be a fun idea to make a video with all of my extra time. Um, this past summer, my partner and I traveled throughout Europe for the second time for six weeks. Um, and while I was there, I wrote down a bunch of the stuff that came to my mind about planning for long-term travel with cystic fibrosis. So uh, I thought this would be a good time to make a video about it. I have some things that when I first started traveling long-term, I didn't really think about and it's really important to have some of those things in mind. So I want to share five different points I have with you and each one has a bunch to it. So I hope this video doesn't get too long, but I really do believe that all this stuff would help you a lot in the long run. So let's get started. Okay, so point number one is all about mobilizing your treatment. So CFRs all have different treatments that we do to keep up with our health every day. Um, the majority of us have some sort of nebulizer treatment, some sort of like shaking vest treatment to clear our lungs, and then all sorts of different um, medications and things that we take. And things change with if you have CF-related diabetes or other things that could be added in there. But regardless of what you have going on every day, it's still important to find ways to mobilize them while you're traveling. So a big uh, obvious one is to get a, tr a travel nebulizer, a portable one, that's a lot smaller than the typical nebulizers that we use every day at home. Um, I purchased the Perry Trek S, looks like this and then it is this small which is like pretty tiny and I have small hands so and then um it also you can purchase the uh, battery with it so it has could actually be cordless um when, when you have this battery charged up so even with that it's pretty small it's really lightweight it's probably like I think like a little over a pound um and I really liked this this came in clutch this year because when we had traveled Previously, I brought like the big one with me um, and that was just a really big pain in the butt. Um, so that's for nebulizers. And then for, in terms of like vest treatments, um, I do have an Aflo vest, which is similar to a Monarch. Both of those are kind of portable vest systems where you don't need the tubes and the huge like 40 pound <laughs> machine that most of us use on a daily basis. Um, so I have the, the Aflo vest, but I personally don't choose to bring that with me traveling. Um, and that's just a personal preference. I choose to find other ways to use my lungs, um, rather than lugging that around with me because we backpack and that would be incredibly difficult <laughs> for me to carry that along. So I usually bring with me the Aerobica. It looks like this and it kind of just, um, uh, it's a way that it like stops your breath and works your lungs in that direction. It sounds like this. So if you're doing that while you're doing your nub treatments or after or before or a combination of those things, it really helps get some stuff up. And then um, also there's the benefit of exercise. So you can come up with some sort of plan where you're going to like run every day or do different workouts that you know really help uh, keep your lungs clear. Um, so it's again, personal preference, but finding ways to make it work for you and your body and what you know you can tolerate and for how long, um, that's really important. And then uh, I like to make a list of all the things that I bring with me. So like the nebulizer, the aerobica, the tubes, the neb cups, all the things that you might need for your treatments because then when you're traveling and you're moving from place to place, you can have that list with you and make sure that you're checking them off that list and putting it all in your bag so you don't forget anything because if you forget something, it's gonna be a lot harder to get your hands on um, another thing um, that you might need. So that is really essential. And then my final tip in mobilizing your treatments is something that I learned the hard way. And I actually um, have this thing, it's called as, as a converter. Um, and basically when we were first traveling in Europe, it just kind of looks like this. Um, I got this one on Amazon, emergency mailed to us in France because uh, when we first got to Europe, I didn't realize <laughs> that the power is different there, like different voltage. So the nebulizer that I brought was for US power voltage and I plugged it in in Germany and turned it on and like basically blew it up. Like it didn't really blow up, but it just completely obliterated the engine. So it wouldn't work anymore. And it was like day one of our like 40 day trip. So I kind of freaked out. Um, we did a lot of research to figure out what had happened and if it was gonna work. Um, 
we basically figured out that the nebulizer was shot and we had to kind of get creative. We ended up working with a CF clinic in Paris and we got um, a nebulizer to rent for the remainder of our trip. I now know, to, know that you can just buy some from certain pharmacies, so I think that was a little bit more complicated than it had to be. However, this year um, I brought this with me and just plugged, you have to make sure that you plug this into the European port or wherever you're going if they have different power than the US or wherever you're from. Um, and then you plug in your devices into here, make sure that it's turned on. <laughs> and then it, you can use like, even if you wanted to, like a curling iron or a hair dryer and stuff like that that would usually blow up with the different power. So that is a big tip that I wish I would have known previously and I hope that'll help you. Okay, so tip number two is all about documentation. Um, so when you have an illness of any sort or you take different medications, it's really important when you're traveling to have that all figured out before you head out. So um, there are a few different things that I encourage and not all of them are necessary, but it does give you some peace of mind. Um, for example, I like to tell my CF clinic, my specialty doctor, that I'll be traveling so that they can write me a formal like doctor's note saying the dates that I'm traveling, where I'm going, and listing all of the medication that I take and all of the you know equipment that I will have with me. That way if you're ever stopped in the airport or in any other t travel situation and they're questioning why you have a nebulizer or medication or anything that you can have that documentation. On that same note, it's really important to have the name, address, and phone number, and other contact info for your CF doctor or your doctor for whatever um, illness you're traveling with. Um, that way, if someone's asking questions, you can have them easily contact the doctor for confirmation. Um, and each of those things are super easy to have with you. It's just a piece of paper, so it doesn't add anything to your travel pack or anything like that. Um, Secondly, uh, is traveling with prescriptions. So when I first started traveling, even within the US, I was always really nervous about traveling with all of my medication because it would be like a big bag of like liquid medication and enzymes and all sorts of different things that you'd think that the TSA would not be super pleased about. Luckily, I've never had any issue with it. Um, they've always been super understanding and they've never like made me pull aside, pull me aside or make me explain in any way. Um, however, it definitely could happen, especially depending on where you're traveling to. I know that many countries in Asia are a little bit more strict about when, when, what medications coming in and out of the country. Um, in Europe, I've had no issues. But what I like to do is make sure that I have um, basically a prescription documentation for each thing that I'm taking. So for example, I'm not going to show this up close, but I um, just kind of cut out the boxes. For, so this is sort of like Palmazyme. It just has my name. Um, and it has like the amount of medication and, and how much I should take per day and it's just good documentation of why I have all the liquids and um, all of the things that could be questioned in different situations. So I definitely suggest like cutting these out so you don't have to bring the whole box with you. You don't have to even bring the whole bottle with you sometimes. I will like keep these documenta this documentation and also just the RX information so that I can consolidate things and not take so many bottles. Um, I know that's kind of frowned upon, so be careful with that depending on where you're going, uh, but it really helps if you're backpacking to not have like half your backpack full of medication bottles. <laughs> okay, and then my last tip here in the documentation is to spend a little bit of time before you go um, looking into CF providers or providers for whatever illness you see a specialty doctor for um, in the area that you're traveling to. So this is definitely not needed, um, but it does give a little bit of peace of mind if you have some sort of issue or you run out of a medication or like me, you have a nebulizer malfunction. That way you can have someone closer in proximity to you to contact about that for advice or for help or um, for something like that, just an emergency. It's kind of nice to know uh, where your nearest CF specialty doctor would be. Okay, so step three is all about prescription medications. Um, when you're traveling long term, you kind of realize how much medication you take a day because you have to fit it all in a bag with you. Um, but there's a couple things that I have in mind and I've done over my experiences that have helped me feel like I've got it under control or, and that 
that everything's going to be okay as you travel with all of that stuff. So the first thing is kind of what I was just saying is pack smart. So again, you don't really need to keep everything in the exact amount of bottles that they come in. So for example, these are my enzyme bottles and usually when you get it from the pharmacy, it's only filled to like here. I will like open them up and distribute other bottles so that they're like filled to the brim so I don't have to take as many of them. Um, sometimes too, as I go, I will get rid of the bottles altogether and stick them into a plastic bag or something if they're taking up too much space or getting too heavy. Um, so be creative with that, and but remain smart because you definitely do want to have that documentation of what that medication is in case you come to one of those circumstances. Um, in terms of getting that med that much medication, it can be kind of challenging sometimes. I tend to have a habit of ordering meds as soon as it's available. Usually it's around like the three week mark after you just ordered. So your pharmacy will allow you to get more. So if you do that over time, then you kind of build up an extra supply and you'll have enough for your trip. If that's not the case, um, there's something I didn't know until my second trip was that um, insurance companies and pharmacies will often grant you a vacation override. So that is in the case where you're taking a vacation and you don't have enough medication on hand to pack with you. They will override that whole thing of can only being able to order once a month or whatever. Um, so that way, if you, if you request that, usually they'll offer one or two of those per year. Um, and that means that you can like waive that limitation and they'll give you like two months worth at a time. Um, so make sure you start asking for those well in advance of when you're leaving, I would say at least two months out. So that way you have time to make sure that everyone's talking to each other, making it happen and shipping it to you um, in time for you to leave. Um, and that's something that's been really helpful for me because it's nice to know that you can get enough to have enough on your trip and enough once you get home so that you're not worried about ordering right away when you get back. Another thing that I, I think is really important is to over prepare just a little bit. Um, you know, when you're traveling, things can happen and you can like lose some of the medication you brought with you or damage some or something happens where you forget some before you leave a location. So always bring a little bit extra, um, a little bit longer than you're actually traveling. So we, we travel for around six weeks and I usually bring at least seven weeks of medication with just in case. Uh, and then another cool backup plan is to, when you're ordering all that extra in extra medication, you can give some to a close friend um, just to have a, a, an emergency supply so that if you do lose or damage some, they could ship that to wherever you are staying. So it might cost a lot of money, but it's going to be a lot easier to just do that than to try to get medication from a, um, a pharmacy uh, where you don't live. Uh, and then another emergency plan is um, to just have a little bit of extra money set aside in an emergency medical fund just in case something crazy happens while you're traveling or you do need to work on ordering medication where you're staying and it can cost a little bit more without insurance or if insurance really is really complicated. So just having a little extra cushion really does help you help you feel better while you're away. Okay, and my fourth tip is to keep a routine. So I know when it, we are traveling, it's really hard to keep a routine because you're going to different places, staying in different places, seeing so many things. But I found that in terms of getting all of my medication and treatments and everything done and, and staying healthy, it's really important to just have even just a morning routine where you wake up every day and you do something similar so that you can make sure to get all of that stuff done. Specifically with treatments, with um, daily medications, it's easy to forget that when you're kind of all over the place and excited about what you're doing. So having a morning routine where you wake up and do treatments and take your medication to breakfast right away is really helpful because then you just have that peace of mind that you know you're getting it done and that you're prioritizing your health because you wouldn't be able to do the travel you're doing if you can't prioritize that first. So that's really important and it's not always easy, but it does some trial and error can help Find something that works best for you and where you're located and what you're doing and everything like that. Okay, and my fifth tip is to have a basic itinerary or plan for where you're going. So I know that there's all this glamour involved in backpacking without a plan and staying in hostels and not knowing where you're going to sleep the next night. And that's great. That's I think that whoever can do that is amazing. And I think that's really awesome. However, I've found that with CF or with any chronic illness, 
it does help to have a little bit of a plan to know that you're gonna have those basic needs met uh, in order to stay healthy. So when we travel, we use Airbnb mostly instead of hostels. Um, that just means that we know where we're gonna be sleeping, we know what it's gonna look like, we know that there's gonna be the basic amenities that we need like electricity and a refrigeration for my medication and um, different things like that. We also know that we're gonna have a place to do that morning routine and make sure that I get all of those things done and before we go exploring for the day. So I highly suggest Airbnb or hotels or some sort of combination of those things. Um, even if you sprinkle in a hostel here and there, just knowing that you're going to have some stable place to be in order to get all that stuff done is really helpful. Um, and even if you don't choose that route, just having some plan of where you're going to be and when, even if that's not an exact plan, is really helpful as well, just in terms of knowing how to contact people or having people contact you or um, shipping things to where you need to if you missed something. Um, for example, when we were in Paris and my uh, nebulizer blew up, it was really awesome that the Airbnb host let us ship things to her address and so that we could get all of the stuff we needed for me to continue doing treatments. Um, that way, when you have that stuff in place, you can plan to always have um, access to clean water and food and restful sleep and make sure that you're prioritizing those basic health needs that can make sure that your trip is really fun and you're not miserable and sick. <laughs> Again, all of this stuff is necessary just because uh, with as someone with a chronic illness, your health comes first and traveling is a super awesome thing that you may or may not be able to do but it wouldn't be happening at all if you didn't prioritize your health first. So keeping all of that in mind, um, I think it's really important in general with all of those five tips to know that it's like CF or your illness can hold you back. You can find ways around it. And everybody has a different story, so traveling may look different for all of us. Maybe it's a two-day trip for some. Maybe it's a year-long trip for some. Um, but know that you can do it. You can find a way to be flexible and to change up things in order to make it work for you and your trip and where you're going and your goals and um, it's worth it every second of the way so yeah I hope that you found this helpful if you have questions about anything I am a little bit more knowledgeable about European travel but if you have questions at all about travel or Europe specifically uh, let me know I'm happy to chat with you about it I really am so passionate about making sure that people can travel and have the life that they want, even with CF. So reach out. I'm excited to talk to you, and I'll see you next time. Bye!